So the next step in creating specifications is to think about all of the stakeholders involved in your project. And we like to summarize this by creating stakeholder profiles. So you'll think about uh, what exactly are the expectations of each stakeholder in your project? What do they need this to do? If you think that through on a stakeholder by stakeholder level, it will really help you understand the people who are going to be using your project or who will be affected by it. Think about what actions each stakeholder is capable of performing. So if you're creating a piece of software and you need someone to click through a series of steps, make sure that they're capable of doing that or trainable to do it. Think about the use that they would have in the situation. A good example of poor performance of this was several years ago we had a project um, that was being used for physical therapy and the measurements they gave the therapist um, were very complicated graphs when all they really needed was a single maximum force value. So as you think through those things and think what do they really need to know rather than everything they could know. I think many of us are engineers and we like to give people as much data as possible and that's not always the most useful format. Also think about in what capacity each stakeholder is going to interact with your project. Will they be an administrator running a database or are they going to be an end user on their phone or on an app? Those sorts of things will also inform exactly what the needs are of your users. Here's a good example from the Voss project of how they thought through one of their stakeholders. So one of the many stakeholders that they had in their project was school teachers who would be taking school groups through the model. So they created an, an example teacher. It's an amalgam of a number of different um, teachers that might be, be interacting with this. So they thought about how old is this person or young is this person? What is their technology level? What is the lifestyle that they live? How might they find out about this project? So in this case, they said she discovered the project through Pinterest. Um, what are some of the technology that she might like to use or times of day? What is her teaching style or goals for her students? What exactly are the needs and aims that she has? And then if you see the IXD considerations, this is looking at how the user will interact or interface with the project. So this is a great way of thinking through how people will interact with your project as sort of standard or normalized users from a larger group. But it's also sometimes good to think way outside of the box at your extreme users, people who would use it in a way that you don't expect. So it's good to consider all of those different viewpoints. So in recap, it's important to understand how each of your stakeholders are going to interact with your project, and those will help you create specifications that meet all of their needs. Creating profiles of the stakeholders is a great way to communicate decisions that you've made or to communicate information to future teams or to design reviewers. And those stakeholder roles that you've determined will help you define your specifications so you can think through what the needs are of each and every stakeholder. So now it's your turn. Create a profile for each stakeholder in your project. Do at least two or three so you can think through all of the different perspectives. Then go back and compare that list against what's in your design documentation. Does it match? Is it better or worse? And make adjustments as necessary.